This is a dramatic reading of The Certainty and Uncertainty Principles, a blog by the stand-up physicist, available at science2.0.com. The game of quantum mechanics is rigged, but I will let you in on the rules. The wave function has all the information usually written as complex values. Operators are used to then grab out different values from the wave function. Once you agree to those ground rules, the uncertainty principle is certain. And its silent bob twin, the certainty principle, is also set in stone. It is the product rule of calculus that does it all. It is not the wizard of Schrodinger behind the curtain, but it is Isaac Newton or his not-so-silent contemporary Gottfried Leibniz. The uncertainty principle gets all the press. Philosophers construct a career thinking precisely about fuzziness. Now they will advance further uh, by thinking fuzzily about fuzziness. I am not a fan of philosophy for the simplest of reasons. No school of philosophy has changed an equation. And equations are the bottom line of physics. In business, things that don't help the bottom line, they're sold off. Now, philosophers cannot be <laughs> divested in a similar way, um, so I'll let them go play by themselves off in a corner. Uh, physics, physics is the art of the deep one-liner. The wave function maps the odds of a system being in a particular state to the complex numbers. The wave function is thus like naked and in bed with probability, so you know uncertainty is, is certain. You know, squaring the probability amplitude is a way of making it real to the observer. But why is there a need for the complex numbers? Well, the reason can be found in the wonderful interference patterns that, you know, show up in quantum mechanics that makes quantum mechanics weird. The math of the interference pattern of a coherent source that passes through two slits requires the complex numbers. And that's reason enough for me. A far more sophisticated reason is provided by analysis done in 1936 by Birkhoff and von Neumann. That paper is actually a little too technical for me to digest. I relied on an executive summary uh, by Stephen Adler. He said that quantum mechanics can be done over the real numbers, the complex numbers, or the quaternions. And Adler even wrote a book called Quaternionic Quantum Mechanics, which you can get for a mere 265 bucks from Amazon, or go to the library. I think that's a better value. Uh, it was Adler who claimed that quantum mechanics over the reals would not have those fun interference effects. In other words, I was just lifting that comment from him. Um, now, his research project is not actually completely panned out, and I'm actually not going to go uh, into a further discussion of that. So, why uh, square complex numbers? I mean, you know, I mean, whatever they are. Well, readers or viewers of, of, of these blogs uh, will hopefully re recall my very unusual take on complex numbers. The real part is time, while the imaginary part is space. And that definition actually uh, extends to any old uh, Joe 4 vector you come across, like energy and 3 momentum. Observers camp out at the same address. Zero, 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 zero. Hmm. No matter what the choice of coordinates are. Now, uh, when they see something at a later time t, well, they're actually at the same location. So they're at t, zero, zero, zero. 
So squaring the probability amplitudes gives the odds that the observer will see the event when they are camped out at the spatial origin, uh, which travels, of course, along with the observer, no matter what that observer does. Now, observers wear a hat hmm, in the nomenclature. What an operator does in detail actually depends on your choice of the representation. In the position representation, uh, the position operator x hat, uh, you know, just plucks out a value of x. Very simple. The momentum operator actually gets more complicated using a derivative uh, along the direction of, of motion. So sometimes people will work actually in a momentum representation and in that case, the momentum is really easy. It's just that the position gets a little bit uh, more complicated as far as the calculus is concerned. Now, I must be frank about the certain fetishes I have. Uh, first, I, I like to write equations in a dimensionless form. Uh, by being dimensionless, equations uh, result in plain old numbers and therefore will be subject to all the tools of mathematics. I mean, trig functions, for example, live on a diet of pure numbers. If you think about their Taylor series where they have x, x squared, uh, x cubed, and you go, well, if that was a length, it would be a length, a length squared, and a length cubed all added together. It makes no sense. So that's why um, one of the reasons I'm, I'm such a big fan of dimensionless numbers every, everywhere, just everywhere. Um, and second, I actually uh, work with quaternions which uh, contain three imaginary basis vectors, uh, one for the three dimensions of space, essentially. Um, so I don't have to write like a factor of i ever. <laughs> it's great uh, to have the i kind of like built in. Um, and third, I always uh, write out the wave function. Um, it's part of my dotting all i's and crossing all t's sort of thing uh, for physics accounting. You know, it. If an operator only makes sense by operating on the wave function, well, then write out said wave function. Uh, I won't go into my fourth uh, fetish, which involves uh, farm, farm animals that are not really harmed in any kind of way. Okay? All right, good. <laughs> so, uh, a commutator of two operators, uh, a position of momentum in the x, x direction, uh, looks something like uh, this. All right, there it is. And uh, you can see everybody's got their hat, and you just kind of do it in uh, both orders. And this is true no matter what the representation is, you know, uh, momentum space or position space. All right, great. So now let's uh, plug in some actual operators, assuming that we're in uh, position space. All right, and so it looks like that. Okay, great. So... Um, and actually, what kind of surprised me about this most was, you see, notice that equal sign? You know, um, it's, this is an exact thing. This isn't like approximation. This isn't, this is, it's greater than sort of thing. And, and it's using the product rule. Product rule, of course, was known to uh, Leibniz and, um, and, and to Sir Isaac Newton. I don't think Le Leibniz got uh, knighted. I guess he didn't out his horn uh, loudly enough, as it were. Um, but but here was the, the the actual really fun realization I had while writing this very blog. Uh, I was doing something with the position and momentum operators, and I was not getting an inequality. I didn't see the inequality. So I said, "Well, uh, did I did I mess up?" <laughs> That's always my first assumption. I messed up. Uh, it's usually uh, pretty accurate. Uh, but no, no, no. Uh, the uncertainty principle uses only one particular ordering of the position and momentum operators, okay? Um, and the basic idea I I going on here is that if you look at the square of the position and the square of the momentum operator, then that is going to be equal to or greater than the commutator. So, at its smallest, the uncertainty principle for position x and momentum along x equals the commutator, okay? 
And uh, yet the uncertainty principle, of course, could, could be larger. Uh, but, you know, it's like, okay, so I could either work with something that's exact or I could say, well, it's exact in some situations and bigger elsewhere. It's like, do I want a fuzzier relationship? It's like, no, I want something precise. And, um, you know, so sages in quantum mechanics emphasize the commutators over the uncertainty principles uh, because the former are exact and the latter, you know, just are, have lower bounds that are equal to the former. I hope you followed that. <laughs> so in this blog, I'm going to call the uh, X, uh, what's what I'm going to call what? This thing. This commutator right there, right there. I'm going to call that thing uh, the uncertainty commutator, okay? Uh, the fact that it is not equal to zero leads to the uncertainty uh, relation between position along the an axis and its uh, momentum along the same axis. So now we're going to repeat this with uh, position along the x-axis and momentum along the y, and we get it going on there, and uh, we get an old Easter egg at the end there. Um, why is that? Well, <clears throat> it's because the coordinates we chose are orthogonal to each other. Um, then that's why it really equals zero. dx dy uh, is, is zero. And that's actually what they call this uh, uh, relation. They call it uh, orthogonality. Uh, and that sounds big and fancy and completely unrelated to the uncertainty principle. But if I compare these two, okay, all right, quickly, these napkins, and I go, what's the difference between these two? It's like, well, I'm swapping a dy uh, derivatives with respect to y for dx, and that's it. I mean, that's the only difference. Um, so I'm actually going to call this uh, dx, uh, sorry, the commutator, that one, with the y's in it, um, I'm going to actually call that the certainty commutator. Uh, the fact that it equals zero is why we can measure those two uh, to arbitrary accuracy. And so really I've kind of like done nothing new in this blog. <laughs> uh, what I strive to do is to push together ideas closer uh, so that my brain can like chew and swallow a, a kind of a smaller idea. The, the greater sign that is found in the uncertainty principle is an indication really that people don't want to teach you about commutators. <laughs> uh, no, now here I say no, no, let's shift to the commutators because uh, I can be much more precise in what I can say, which is what we try and do in physics and be precise. Mm. Yes. Conjugate variables like x position and momentum along x mean that their expressions in terms of the calculus will have a non-zero product rule. Now that sounds unfuzzy, which I think is a very good thing. So the next time you get like trapped by a philosopher uh, type who's, who's about ready to go on a half hour ramble uh, about the uncertainty principle, ask him how he explains uh, the certainty in pairs of measurements that appear just as often uh, as those uncertain um, uh, pairs of variables in quantum mechanics. And it's a pretty safe bet that he will never mention the product rule of calculus. So uh, here are my snarky puzzles. Um, you know, where's my cowbell? I want more cowbell. You know, and people feel that way about h-bar. They want to see their h-bar. So uh, add it back into that first equation and then discuss uh, why that type of exercise is rather silly. So here is a bonus problem which I thought of in the car and I just thought it was so good I should uh, add it. All right, so make the relationship between the, the position and the momentum 
operator uh, more precise. Make it complete, okay? I mean, figure out what's minus, uh, missing. Uh, the minus sign in the commutator should give you a uh, very uh, good clue. So, um, add, add, add what needs to be add, added back in, um, and then you don't need to use that greater than sign, uh, which can be relegated uh, to bad methods in education uh, that will continue for years to come. All right. Thank you very much.